The issue relates to the role of questioning in self-assessment and in the whole feedback cycle. Firstly, you've got to ask about the nature of questioning in classrooms. Like teachers ask between 150 and 250 questions a day. So questioning is rife. The problem is that 95% plus of those questions that teachers ask, the kids know, the teacher already knows the answer to. 90 to 95% are about surface level, which tells the students very clearly that surface level is valued here, not deep learning. 90 to 95% of the answers are asked in less than one to three seconds, and it's usually about the content. And so I'm very jaundiced about the issue of questions. On the other hand, when you ask how many questions does a class ask a day about their work, they don't know the answer to. So I'm ruling out procedural things like what page am I on, can I go to the toilet? The answer is two. We need to worry more about the nature of student questions, about listening to the questions that students ask about their work, about where they're going to next, about what, how they're going and where they're going. And so we could put a lot more focus on getting teachers to work for, with students to ask questions. That's much healthier than all the work we've done over the last 60 to 100 years of getting teachers to ask better and different kind of questions, which quite frankly just means they ask more. And for the students, it feels like they're in a pop quiz every moment of the day. They learned that their job is to, if they know the answer, to put their hands up. If they don't know the answer, to look like they do know the answer. And be that compliant student. That's just not healthy. So yes, student questions can. And certainly people like Marty Nystrom have looked at impact questions. Questions kids ask about their work they don't know the answer to are the most powerful. And certainly if you focus on that in any classroom, you can dramatically improve the nature of what happens. And so. One of the key issues there is how we can get students to ask questions. We've done quite a bit of work in that area and the first thing you need to worry about is building trust. You have to build trust not only between the teacher and the student, but between the students. Because if you often ask a question in a class and you don't know the answer to it, some of your peers can give you very subtle but direct messages about, there goes old dummy again, or worse, don't interrupt the teacher's flow. You've distracted them. And so many students learn not to interrupt the teacher's flow, so they just keep quiet. So how do you build the trust so that it's okay? How do you structure the task so that self-questioning is part of it? Like we know at the deep level of learning, one of the most powerful ways for students to consolidate their learning is to talk aloud, is to think aloud. Self-question, self-verbalization. When was the last time you walked into a classroom and heard kids thinking aloud? In fact, I go a step further. When's the last time you walked into a staff room and heard teachers thinking aloud? Unfortunately, most often, we are asked to do it silently by ourselves. We're not set up in structured situations. Too often in group work, students, their self-talk is about the content. What do you know? What do you not know? And so it really comes back to the teacher about how they structure the activities so that they can explore what they know and what they don't know. And there are quite a few methods out there, like the jigsaw method and other methods that are very powerful at working out how you build those relationships, which is the key notion to deep learning. So a lot comes back to the nature of structuring of the class. It's absolutely embedded on the notion of trust, but it also comes back to the issue we were talking about before about student assessment capabilities. Is giving the student the role and the responsibility of self-assessing themselves. Where do you think you are? Where do you think you need to go next? And of course, for some students, you're gonna to have to help them a lot. On some students, it's correction, modification, redirection. Some students, they're very good at answering those questions. And so I'm very much focused on student questions. One of the ways in which we were able to get student questions increased in class is using social media. Things like Facebook, Edmodo, Verso, those kinds of tools. And what we find is students will ask each other questions, they'll ask teachers questions over those kind of social media things that they won't even ask, even if the teacher's standing right beside them. And so I think there's, this is where technology could really come to the fore about opening up and giving students the courage and the opportunity and the okayness to query and question what they do and they don't know.